Hello everybody, welcome to the Cafe of Knowledge. Appreciate y'all tuning in today. Uh, everybody already know that this is going to be our chapter 9. Because you know chapter 8 last week, we did about the budgeting for yourself and touch base on budgeting for a company. Okay, um, so hopefully you have a good understanding about that. Um, if you don't have a good understanding about that, just um, email us at Cafe of Knowledge 88 at gmail.com. Okay, and then uh, any questions that you have, feel free to ask them and I will try to answer them for you and will answer them for you. Okay, but anyway, thank y'all for tuning in today. So last week, uh, once again, we did do, and hey, don't y'all forget to hit like and subscribe, please. You know, because I'm trying to show people how to better themselves, better career, better their own career, get another job that pays more if they would like to do that. Um, and just, just, just hit like and subscribe. That's all we are asking. Okay, so now let's get right on into chapter nine. Chapter nine this week is company. We're going to talk about like a company or your business budget and your budget and the budget plan. Okay, now let's say that you have, you know, there are some, some stores, um, some name brand stores that they have about five or six or 20 or 30 of these stores spread all the way across the United States. And some uh, are international. They, they are some overseas and they, they have stores that's overseas as well. Okay, so that means that that company has about 20, 30, sometimes 100 and 150 or 200 stores spread all across everywhere. Okay, so that's what we're going to get into today so that anyone, uh, if you're working for a company or you're working for yourself, you'll know how to set a budget plan and how to try to meet that budget at the same time. Um, if you haven't got into that field yet or you, you haven't got along those way yet, at least you know what to do when you decide to jump into this field, okay? Uh, but it's all in good knowledge because you use the same, like we said last week, you set yourself a budget plan the same way you do a company. The company just handles more. But you set your budget plan for your personal use for yourself the same way, okay? It's no different. Okay, so now you're just dealing with a lot more uh, money and you're dealing with a lot more expenses. That's all it is. But it all works hand in hand in the same way. Okay, so now you know how some companies do have different businesses spread all over. They have about 10 stores or 20 stores or 100 stores or 200 stores and they spread all over. Okay, and they have to they need to know what each one of these stores is doing they see how much each one of those stores bring in a month, right? Now, each store, let's say it's like five stores. Let's say five stores, okay? We're going to say store A, store B, store C, store D, store E, okay? But they all belong to the same company. So let's just say that uh, we, we name it... Um, Jay's up, okay. Jay's up, okay. So Jay's up. Uh, let's say it's five of them, okay, and they spread all across probably one state, or they might be spread across different states, but it's only five of them, okay. And they operate in this five stores in different places, okay. So let's say that you have to. Keep track of those five stores or this is to let you know how they keep track of all five of those stores, okay? Now, you can't treat one store the, the same as all the other four stores. So, you got five stores. All these stores run differently 
They, they sell the same thing. It's the same store. It's the same name. It's ran by the same owner, which it could be you or the owner. Say you open up five stores somewhere and you spread them across. However, if you spread it across the same state, all five stores are in one particular state. Or you got five stores and you put them in one state and then there's another one in another state. And then, however, it all still works the same. Okay, now, let's say that you have five stores. Now, you, all those five stores bring in different amounts of money. You might have one store that's located in an area where it's not that much traffic, but maybe in the summertime it's real busy because a lot of people come visit that area and stuff like that. Maybe that store doesn't bring in a lot of money like another one of those same stores that's probably in a great big city around an interstate and it's a, next to the mall or next to a shopping plaza or something like that. Well, that, that particular store brings in more money than the store that sits off by itself somewhere. Okay? And... The only time probably that store, like, it, it makes money all year long. But maybe that is by, say, a beach or it's by this or, you know, a nice scenery of the water. Usually, a lot of people come to the water around the spring and the summertime and sometime right at the beginning of fall. So, that store might be busy during those times. But then when winter cold and snow hit, not that many people are going to the beach. So, that store is not going to make that money during that time of the year. But the other store, it don't matter if it rains, sleet, or snow. Because they are in the middle of a mall or around a mall and around a interstate or a highway, they're going to get business, a lot of business, all year long. So, that's the thing about knowing where your stores are and the location of the stores. And that's how I come when business owners purchase a new store to open for their company, they look for things like that. They look for how busy the area is, how much traffic the area have. Is it a, a area that, huh, don't, don't be, uh, it's not a lot of people that come here. Or they looking for areas that they know that they store will survive and make a lot of money in that certain area. So that's when they scout for real estate or you know, a building to buy uh, that's close to something that's always busy, okay? They are not going to put no store inside of a town that is only probably like 200 people stay there. They're not going to put that store, it, it just depends. If you're talking about like a big franchise, they're going to put it somewhere on the outside of that city or they're going to find somewhere else in that city that it's a lot of business going on and those 200 people will have to drive to where that store is but that company or that owner is not going to put their money in an area that's not really that busy so first though so that's how that goes and that's how businesses gauge on how their business is doing, where they're going to put their business at, and all that good stuff, okay? So, you needed to know that. So, let's say we have five stores. And, like we said, we got store A, B, C, D, E, okay? And these five stores say that uh, they are all over the state. Let's say the state. And they are all over the state or all over the city or wherever, but it's five of them. Of the same store. Like we said. Uh, it'll be J's up. Okay. Now. Um, how they keep track of it. Let's say J's up. The first store. Let's say that they say. Um, hey. I'm going to just give y'all a quick example. Before we go into this chart. Because I'm going to show y'all this chart in a minute. And that chart has big numbers. Money money numbers on it but i'm gonna give you kind of a simple 
uh, way so you can kind of understand what we're doing. Let's say you, you say you own this store or either you're running these stores or whatever. And you'll say, okay, store A, you need to make $1,000 this month. Uh, store B, you need to make $2,000 this month. Store C, you need to make $3,000 this month. Store D, you need to make, say, $5,000 this month. And store E, you need to make $6,000 this month. Okay? Now, each one of those stores, this is what how the owner will tell each store. You need to make this a month, $1,000. You need to make $2,000. You need to make $3,000. You need to make $5,000. You need to make $6,000. That's just how they do. Okay? And like we said last week, they set these goals because they have to make sure they have enough money to pay their bills and pay their employees and on top of that pay all other expenses that they may have and also be able to put a little extra money in the bank, okay, to save. So they give you a goal and if you make this goal, then they know that, okay, we okay for this month. So if that first store was supposed to make $1,000 that month, now say if that store only make $900 at the end of the month, well, that means it was $100 short from reaching their budget goal. And of course, the owner of the company or you as an owner of a company need to figure out, oh man, why why did I only make 900 and I didn't make that 1000 that I need? Because see, you need that 1000 to make sure that all your bills are paid, all your employees are paid, and you still have some money left in the bank, okay? And so you have to sit back and see why that, stuff, that you didn't make that money, okay? Now, maybe, maybe, you know, you could have, your employees or you could have probably upsold some things a little bit more. You know how when people come into your store say, hey, we have this, a new product or whatever. Would you like to buy that? See, you have to upsell stuff. You know, or they call it, you know, promoting or sell or, or upsell something. You have to upsell it. You know, show people, oh, you know, we got this new washing powders over here. Would you like to try that? And then you try to bring in more money like that. But when you don't make your budget go, you need to find out why you didn't. Because if you made it last, last month, you should be able to make it this month. And that's what some companies do. They might have, or business owners, they might have their budget for this month uh, $1,000. Then the next month, they might push it up and say, okay, this month, you're going to have to make $1,200, $1,200. Instead of $1,000, you're going to have to make $1,200 this month. And then when you make that $1,200 that month, then you'll look at their budget plan, and the next month, they might have it where you have to make $1,500 that month. So, see, your budget goal usually go up and up and up that the company wants you to make because they're trying to bring in more money, okay? And they depend on the employees and the managers. Basically, the more of the weight will be on the managers to make sure that they make that goal. We, they don't care what's going on. What They don't want no excuses. All they want is for you to make that budget goal that they set. And if that go, budget goal say $1,000 a month, that manager needs to bring in $1,000 a month. If that budget goal say $1,500 a month, that manager and employees and everybody else need to try to sell stuff and, you know, be real nice and sweet to customers and try to bring more customers because they're trying to make that $1,500 a month. Because if they don't make that $1,500 a month, you better really know that the head boss or the owner or whatever is going to go to that manager and say, hey, why didn't you meet this goal? And the reason why they're going to go to that manager and ask them that, because they need that money. That owner needs that money 
so that they can pay their bills. And they don't like for managers to not make those budget goals they set for them each month. Okay? Because if a manager can't make those goals, then, and they keep missing them goals, and every time they say, okay, you got to make $1,000, then they only make $500. Then they say, okay, you got to make $2,000, then they only make $1,500. They're not making their goals. And pretty soon, that's when they let that manager go or demote that manager or something like that because they feel like they can't reach the goal that we're setting for them, this budget plan and this budget goal, they can't meet it and we need to bring somebody in here that's going to meet these goals because we need this money. So that's how it go, y'all. Okay? So now, that's why I wanted to kind of break it down to y'all in a simple fashion. And in some of these big stores, uh, retail stores, really, a lot of these retail stores, um, they will have where, you know, we talked about, wait, we, we talked about this weeks ago when we was doing inventory about uh, your accessory apartment department. We talked about uh, how your, say, your shoe department, your clothing department. We talked about all these things. And if you're just new and tuning in, you might want to refer back and you will see where I have inventory and it tell you what chapter, week one, to week two, to week three, to week four, level four. You might have to refer back if you don't know how the departments break down because we already have covered that. Okay, so like we said, you know how some retail stores have different departments and they have accessory apartment accessory means your jewelry your earrings your watches and all that stuff glasses things like that they call that that's accessory department then you have your shoe department then you have your pets department you have all kind of different books department maybe the store sell books you have a books department now your company or even if you own the company, um, your company wants you, they're going to set a goal for each one of those departments, okay? They're going to say, hey, uh, well, they'll set an overall goal for the whole store, but then they're going to look and say, okay, y'all yeah, need to make $200 in accessories this month, uh, $300 in the pet department this month, month. You need to make, um, say, $700 in the HBA department. HBA department is usually uh, where you have your lotion, your toothbrush, your toothpaste, stuff like that. But they'll say, okay, you need to make $700 in your HBA department. And it goes on and on. Each department has a budget goal amount that they need to make each month. Okay, and if all these stores hit their budget goal, then you most likely will hit your overall goal that the company wants you to make. So like we said a few minutes ago, if that company say you need to make $1,000 in this store this month. Okay, if you get $200 from accessory and you, you get all this money that you're supposed to get in each category, that will add up to that $1,000. And it probably, so you know, you could sell more, and that will make you over your budget. Instead of you making $1,000 that month, you probably would make $1,200 that month. So that means you did $200 more than what the company wanted you to make, because they only want you to make 1000 But you went up to... 200. So that means you was $200 over the budget plan, which is a good thing. But when you go under that budget plan, that ain't too good. Okay? So now, that's how you do it. So you have each department that has a goal, budget goal, that you need to make $200. You need to make $300 in here. You need to make $500 on shoes. You need to make $300 in HBA. You need to make um, $200 in, in the book department, all these things. And so that's when 
each day or each week, you would go back, if you're a manager or whatever, or own the place or whatever, each week, you would go back and you would see how much you're making in each department because you just hoping that by the end of the month, you reach that 1000 budget plan goal that is set for you, okay? And when it gets to about the third week, and it don't look like you're going to meet that $1,000 goal, that's when that fourth week, everybody need to be around there trying to pull in guests and try to upsell things. You know, they, they be like, hey, uh, we got this new gum. Do you want to try it? Do you want to buy it? It's real good. And somebody be like, well, I guess so, because they're trying to get more sales in the door because they want to get that $1,000 goal, budget goal that they're trying to hit. Okay, so that's how that go. So I'm going to show you a chart, and I'm going to just go over it right quick, but I do want you to screenshot it if you can, because I'm not going to sit here and show go down each one of these lines. I'm just going to show you about two or three things to get you kind of uh, understanding of what I'm talking about. And then if you screenshot this, then, then go back and listen to this video, you will be able to see how this work and how that a stores who makes they go stores who don't make they go okay and you would have a good understanding of oh that's how it goes okay so now uh i'm gonna show you this right here and this is let's say this is a simple this right here is a simple budget goal okay this is a simple budget goal you can screenshot it and you see it has store a store b c d and e those are five different stores okay five different stores now each store if you see store a in accessories store a made $65,917 then you'll see store b made $88,312. Then you'll see store C made $42,087. These are in accessories. We're going right across. Okay. Then you'll see store D. They made $68,629 in accessories. And then store E made $78,000 $78,200 in accessories. Okay? And then it goes accessory. So that means which one of these stores sold less in accessories for the whole month? So it looked at $42,087. That's store C. So store C sold less in accessories. And you know accessories mean the earrings... The um, rings, the watches, and things, that department. So, Store C only made $42,087. The rest of the stores made in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So, Store C made the lowest in accessories. Right? So, then you see the next line. But all together, all these stores put together, they made... $343,145 in accessory. That's the first line you see. Okay? And then for apparel, apparel means clothing. Okay? And if you see store A made $96,000. Store B made $60,000 in clothes. Store C made $80,000 in clothes. Store D made $86,000 in clothes. Store D made 58,000 in clothes. Okay? So what two store made the less in clothes? It would be store B and store E. They didn't make that much in clothes. Okay? And so that's when uh the company owner or the manager who is above or whoever owns the store, 
that's when the companies that's not bringing in what they're supposed to bring in or they want their numbers to be a little bit higher, they will go into that store and say, hey, they will ask some of the other stores, hey, call that store and tell them what you're doing. The stores that had 80000 I mean, $86,000 in uh, accessory sales, and then the other one only had $42,000. They, the one, the store who was doing good, they would have that manager or that whoever call the store that's not doing so well, they will call that manager and tell that manager kind of, some little strategies or something that they did to get their numbers to be that high. Because they want this other store that have the 42000 the low number of selling and accessory. They want that store to be up in the 80s too. So what they're going to do is try to come up with a strategy to make this store make $80. Thousand dollars in accessory sales versus that 42 they was making okay and usually if all the other stores the other four stores are in the 80s they making 80,000 and 80,000 here and this store E making 80,000 all that and you got that one store that's making 42,000 like I said at the beginning is this store in an area that maybe it is by a beach and all that and not that many people comes in. But if that store is by a busy area that they're busy all year round and they just pulling in $40,000 in accessories but all the other stores are pulling in eighty, is something going on in that store that needs to be addressed. Because that store has to bring its numbers up like the other stores. Okay, and it's the same way when it comes to, and what they would do is, that's when a manager can would come in, because like I told uh, everybody, I used to run about 10 or 12 stores, and that's what you do. I would go in the ones who not doing too well. I would go in, first of all, see how they're running their store. Is their employees happy? Because sometimes when you got a whole bunch of employees that's unhappy, they don't work at their 100% level, okay? Um, if they feel like they're being treated wrong or whatever, whatever, they're not working at 100% level, okay? So you have to find out all this stuff. That's when you will have a manager or somebody who would come in because that's what I did. I would go in and I would see, hey, what is the problem? I would see how they run in the store or they short staff. Are they running out of product? Are they running out of inventory to where they can't sell nothing because they always run out of stuff? And when people come in to buy something, they don't never have it. So the people walk out and go to another store and buy it. It could be that. That the inventory is not stocked up. And that's why they're not bringing in themselves like that because their stores, their shelves are empty. Half of their stores are empty and they're not ordering the way they should be ordering, and they're not going by their part level. You know, we talk about part level in inventory. They're not going by their part level to keep their products on the shelf. So that could be a reason why their sales are dipping. Okay? And it could be that the employees are, uh, they, they're not happy there. Okay? And then you have to address that problem. And then it could be that they work in short staff. You know, they got long lines all the time to where people get tired of waiting on them long lines. And then some people just walk out. And don't, when them people walk out the door, that's some sales going out the door too. That's money that that store could have had if you had enough people working in that store to get them in and get them out. Okay? So it's a lot of things that can cause your numbers to fall down or not making what other stores are making. Okay, so that's how you do that. And so let me show y'all one more thing. So at least y'all know now how to look for different categories. If you got you got five stores and all five stores are 
doing pretty good in one Pacific department. And each department, each store is doing good. And then you got that one store that's not doing too well. That's the store that most likely the company's uh, owner or your regional managers and all that start coming into your store and seeing what the problem is, why you can't reach your budget goals. You have to reach those budget goals, okay? So now, let me show you uh, the same chart, but I'm going to kind of come down here a little bit. And if you see, it has right here budget sales, okay? Budget sales. Look right here, say store A. Store A budget sales, okay? The budget sale is that's right here budget sale the budget sale for store e a the budget sale is six hundred thousand dollars so that's what that store need to make each month six hundred thousand dollars okay now look up here and it tells you exactly what store a did store a did five hundred and ninety thousand dollars so that means they are negative $9,907. That means they missed their budget goal by $9,000. Okay? And then it's just the same way that you do for the rest of them. Okay? It's the same way you do for You look at store B. And like I said, screenshot these things so you will see what I'm talking about. It shows that, and then it even show you that last year, last year they made $510. So at least they made more this year than they did last year. Okay, so that's just how that go. And then look at store B, and store B is the same way. You know, their goal, their goal is to make store B, their goal is to make Five hundred five hundred and forty thousand dollars. Okay, and they made five hundred and eighty nine dollars, which is that's good. So that means a plus. They made they budget go by forty nine thousand two hundred and three dollars. Okay, so you can screenshot that and go over it, and it also tells you about your labor hours. That's your employees. Okay, it tells you. Your budget goal for employees that you only you only can spend say they say you only spend thirty four thousand in employee hours. So let's say they say okay, you only can spend let's say thirty thousand dollars for labor. Labor is employees. So they say this month you only can spend thirty thousand dollars in labor, right? That means when you're making your schedule, you can't go over $30,000. When you're making your employee schedule, you cannot go over $30,000. You have to stay under $30,000. Because remember they said your budget goal for labor hours, that's your employees, that's all your managers, everybody. So the person who, make it, who makes the schedule has to stay up under $30,000, okay? Because if they go over $30,000, guess what? You went over your budget, and the company is not going to like that, okay? So that's how you do that. And you have some managers that they trying to make the goal so much to they make the schedule with less employees, I mean, you know, like it ain't but two, three employees in the store, and the store busy, that's what makes everybody have to wait in line so long. Because the person who made the schedule is now penny pinching on the schedule. You don't have to penny pinch. You can make an employee schedule that'll fit exactly the way the goal wants you to fit. If they say, don't spend no more than $30,000 in Labor, that means employees. And that means the one who makes the schedule, they make the schedule enough to where they know they don't go over $30,000 for 
for the employees. So they make the schedule, and they make the schedule to make sure that they fit all those employees and still have enough employees to run their store where their store can operate well without going over that $30,000 budget. Okay? But if some managers that they are cut cut it short so much till they are only spend twenty thousand dollars in uh, labor hours when they really got thirty you can spend ten thousand more hours ten thousand more dollars for labor but because they trying to penny pinch and make it it also makes the store suffer because now where you should have four or five employees running a store you only got two now it makes the it, the business start suffering it's where you only got two employees trying to do what six employees do. And then, of course, that's when the long lines start or they, they don't stock the store up because ain't nobody to stock the store up. And it's just, it, it makes the business suffer. And that can cause a business to lose money as well. Okay? So, we're going to talk more into the employee labor budget probably another two weeks we'll go into how to budget a labor schedule meaning an employee schedule if they say you only supposed to spend thirty thousand dollars this month well i'm gonna show you how to calculate to make sure you only spend thirty thousand dollars that month not even thirty you try to come up on it by two or three thousand just to be on the safe side so you'll save twenty six thousand you see what I'm saying? Because you don't want to go to the whole 30. Because say if you need somebody to work an extra two or three hours before they get off, you'll still have a cushion there for them to stay those two or three hours. Okay? So I'm going to show you all in about two more weeks how to do an employee schedule and keep it in the budget plan. But today, we just went over, and this applies if you're in a restaurant business, retail business, any type of business, your own business, this applies to it all. When you set yourself a budget or the company set yourself a budget plan and a budget goal, a budget plan is when they plan on what they want you to make. The budget goal is the person who is operating the store has to meet that budget goal that the company planned for us to make or for you to make. Okay, so if that company said you need to make $1,000 this month, you need to make $1,000 in that store that month. Okay, not $900 and not $800 because if you start going below your goal, you're going to get a visit from your boss man. And if you're an owner and you're going down, that's not good because the, the owner knows that if... I'm going under, I'm going to soon have to shut down. So I have to meet these budget goals. Okay? So that's how it goes. So that's why companies are so strict on, they want you to make that goal. If that company sets you a goal that you have to make $1,000 for that month, you have to make $1,000 that month. And you could look at your register receipt. Each day and each week, and when you do inventory, you can look at your register receipt, and it'll tell you how much you did each week. So if one week you make, say, $300, and then the next week you make another $300, that's $600. So now you only got four more hundred dollars to go to meet your 1000 budget plan. Okay? And then that third week, say you make... $3,000 again. Well, that's $9,000. I mean, $900. Well, say you make $100 here and $100 there and $100 there. But, you know, I ain't trying to confuse y'all. But say if it's, say, $1,000 for that month. And you made $200 that first week, $200 that second week, $200 that third week. That means you have $600. So you need four more hundred dollars. To make that 1,000 go. Okay. And that fourth week. You got to push it. 
because you wants to bring in that four hundred dollar because this is the last week you got to make that one thousand dollar go and so that last week you try to come up with everything try to upsell things Try to get your customers to buy different things or shop more or spend more because you're trying to meet that $1,000 goal. And you got $400 more to go, and this is the fourth week. So in that fourth week, you got to make $400 so that you can meet that company $1,000 goal. Okay? So that's how that goes. And if you go under that goal, you already know that you finna hear from your big man or your big boss or the owner or whoever. Because they want you to not miss this goal, make this goal. Okay? So, that's all I have for y'all today. And like I, like I said too, is when you have five different stores, that's how company do they look at each store and see how well each store is doing. And if one store is not doing or pulling in the type of money that the other stores are, then all the big boss and all the managers, everybody comes to that store and see what is going on. Because the numbers will tell them. If all these other four stores are doing well and they bringing in 85000 85000 here, 80000 All these other stores are bringing in $80,000, but this one store is bringing in 40000 40, a week? Then something wrong. Something is wrong. Like I said, unless they are in an area that, oh, this time of the year, this store don't do too well because they're by the beach. And not many people go to the beach when it's freezing cold and 20, 20 degrees and five degrees no no many people go to this particular store because they're by the beach and not many it's not a lot of traffic and a lot of people around the beach to come in here and shop that might be understandable right there you know what i'm saying but now if you in an area like the other stores are and you're not by the beach and you buy the interstate or you buy you in the middle of downtown somewhere or midtown somewhere and all that and your store is not doing well then they all gonna look at the manager who is running that store and that's the person who will most likely have a long talk with their boss and the owner okay and then it trickles down to the employees and then because that manager going to then start getting on to the employees. Y'all got to start doing this. Y'all got to start doing that. that. That's when it starts trickling down. Okay? So that's how that goes. So that's all I have for y'all today. Uh, make sure, I hope y'all screenshot it and go over it yourself. Uh, and you will see what I'm talking about by, oh, this store did make more money because it goes across. Accessories go across. Then it have apparel. It goes across. It'll tell you what store A made, store B made, store C made, store D made, store E made. And then you can see going across the line which store did better than another store. You know, and you can see what store that's always doing good and what store is not or don't always do too well. So that's how you balance and know who is making their budget plan and who is not making their budget plan. So that's how owners and big regional bosses and everybody else know how your store is doing. Wherever you're working at, whether retail, restaurant, or whatever, that's how they know how they do it. I mean, uh, even if it's like a skating ring or something like that. If a person owns three, four skating rings, and it's one skating ring in one state, one, and it's in the same state, but it's in one city, and then another one in another city, another one in another city, they got a budget plan to see. This is what this one need to make. This one what that one need to make. This one what that one need to make. And if one don't hit their goals and don't make that, then the owners wants to know what's going on. Did you go up on the emission or the price to get in? Because you're not supposed to. That's probably why everybody running to this one 
and not this one? Or do you not have enough skates for everybody? Like, you, you don't have that many skates? Or something might, something is going on to where this particular skating ring is the same exact brand skating ring, the same person on it, but it's like two of them or three of them are doing good, but it's one not doing so well. You know, what is it? Do, is, is it not safe enough for people? What is it? So that's when the managers, the owners and stuff, they try to tackle that problem because they don't like for their sales to go down. They want them to be able to make what they want them to make so they can pay the bills, pay the employees, and, and pay for their other expenses that they need to pay for and not go under. Okay, so that's all we got today. Gain knowledge to prevent blockage. And we all know what that means. The more you know, the harder it is for anybody to block y'all from y'all goals and y'all success. See y'all next week. And next week, we'll talk about a little bit more of the budgeting as well. Bye-bye.